Okay, here we are. We're deep, deep, deep <laughs> into a refit at the moment. And if we just have a bit of a, um, a little bit of a teaser, <laughs> we'll, have, we'll have a look at what the outside of the boat looks like. Just check this out. So you can see that... We've ripped everything off the boat. We've ripped everything off. So what we've done, all the fittings, every bolt that goes through um, the deck, we've pulled it out and we've filled it with epoxy. Yes. Okay. No leaks. There will be no, no more leaks. leaks. <laughs> and whatever we put back, we'll be, we'll be re-drilling new holes and seating them properly. Mm -hmm. And we've got all the rigging removed. We've got a little bit of rigging chat coming up. Yep. Um, and, and a few unusual solutions because we came across a, um, a well-renowned rigger and we, we got his um, input, help, everything, you name it. But that's not what this episode's about. Right. <laughs> what we're talking about is these cabinets. Here's one here. Here's one here. There you go. So this one here, if you look back in time, this used to be our electrical cabinet. Well, here used to be our electrical cabinet and it was hideous. Mm. <laughs> and I sort of lived with it just because it was there and I wasn't ready to change it because if you look at the amount of work we've just put in, you can see why. You know, I didn't want to do it like a, like a half-assed job is yeah. the best way to put it. Yeah. So in here, I'm not going to show you because we'll go through that in the episode but on the other side that cupboard that gives us a bit of balance what's in there pasky yeah so this one here it hides the back of our gps unit Ta -da. and it's engine parts and also engine parts yeah so we had a shelf here that used to hold engine parts but we've moved that here so we have more of a functional space in front of the quarter berth there hmm. so yeah this is um it looks really nice. The doors, um, the cabinet doors, you would notice they're um, the same construction as the doors that we built for the sliding doors. Yep. So we won't be covering that in this video. We'll be going straight into the building of the actual cabinet and the wiring and the things that you did, the little tricks and things that you did to make it a really amazing unit. But you're going to have to watch the video to see inside. <laughs> Let's go. Welcome to Free Range Sailing. For those of you that are new here, our boat Marul is a Clansman 30. She's a fiberglass 30 foot masthead sloop built in New South Wales in 1969. Troy bought her seven years ago in Cairns and sailed her around the top of Australia all the way to Perth. Three and a half years ago, we sailed north from Perth to circumnavigate the Australian continent together, filming our cruising adventures and attending to any essential maintenance along the way. We are currently in lockdown in Tasmania, the southernmost part of the continent, where we've decided to carry out a long overdue refit. If you want to be notified of all our weekly refit videos over the coming months, make sure you subscribe to our channel and hit the bell button. In previous episodes, you saw us build the cabinet doors with the help of our friend Lance in his workshop. Okay, it's time to do the glue ups. We've cut all these mitres, they look really good. Um, I've done a dry fit here to see if it lines up and it does look like it does line up. This cabinet that we, this one I prepared earlier, and look, <laughs> that's a nice close mitre, isn't it? There's no gaps in there. This one is going to have shelves put in it. This is going to be our electrical board. This one's just a, a matching cabinet just to give balance to the boat, but we're going to Put shelves in so i've cut grooves there before i glued these face bits on because this is just ply isn't it but instead of seeing that see how you've got the the plies there but look by sticking that on there i've tricked tricked everyone looks like a solid bit of wood so i've marked everything arrows up and i'm going to glue these miters up and miter gluing is a challenge unless you've been talking to our mate lance and he sets you in the right direction so i'll show you the trick that he showed us so here it is, it's dry assembled, there's no glue yet. So just to avoid confusion, we'll just keep everything end to end, like this, like we're unraveling it, and lay it over, and the same, and lay it over. So it's all out, we've got it against a, a nice straight edge there. I'll just have some tape just hanging off the end. Now, I'm gonna flip it all over. Upside down. Now for the glue. That's the fun bit, the glue's on. And as we, as we pick up and just bring these together, a 
course the tape is stretching and adding tension. And here it comes. Look at that. It's crazy, isn't it? It's just so mad how well this works. <laughs> I just saved myself some trouble sanding later on by using my nice square bit of thin flexible plywood and just clean out those those grooves. And I know what you're thinking, like to look at me you'd go, there's no way that that guy will be able to make mitres that meet and match up. But look at that, with tape, <laughs> I can do it. You can do it, if you've got Lance's workshop. Disclaimer. Troy and Lance explained that mitre joints aren't particularly strong, but they can be reinforced by cutting slots and gluing in splines. These cabinets will also be getting treated with epoxy and they are not expected to take much loading. This cabinet here is going to hide the back of the GPS um, and it's a sorted wiring. So this, this particular shelf that goes in there that I made, we just came in and I'll just have to take out maybe an inch little recess out of there. So I'll mark it up and I'll make a nice neat job of that. And then that can go back in and then all the wiring and stuff like that can be here. But then we'll actually have usable space. Each cabinet will have <laughs> A door. Oh, it looks so smart. <laughs> it's you amazing. Like, you like that, Pasky? Yes. And then, of course, we've got a matching, we've got a matching cabinet that will go on this side, and in there will be our electrical cabinet. Yeah. So we'll have a we'll have a little bit of a, a balance to the boat, which has been lacking because before we had a big ugly electrical board here. Oh, it was so ugly. It's just there. Yeah. <laughs> there it is. It's it's hideous. Look at that thing. <laughs> We've been staring at that for four years. Oh. So the, 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 the big difference that we're going to have is that you won't see the switches. Yeah. All right, the switches will be behind there. It's gonna be one more motion when we wanna turn a switch on, of course, we'll just open this up, turn it on and close it. But from a point of view of electrics, that's not a bad thing because it just stops moist salt air getting to all of this stuff. You can see that there's rust on the screws. If we look in the electrical cabinet, we've got a, a door inside a door, and that means I can't have any um, any catches that are going to provide an obstruction on the inside. So what I'm going to do is use these little half inch round rear earth magnets. I've um, recessed a couple of holes here, filled them up with epoxy, I'm going to drop them in, just tap them home, and then coat them, and then they, I won't have to worry about rust. So we'll have the matching magnets in the doors when they go on. And that'll be um, that'll be a pretty strong catch. <laughs> Beautiful. So normally, what will happen with a butt hinge is you'll recess it with a chisel before you put it in, in the door and in the case. But what we're going, the reason why we didn't do it is because I have here adhesive foam tape and the reason I want to put it on there is just when this door is shut I want this um, on here to contact and just exclude as much moist salt air as possible because it's the back of the GPS and whatever else we have in here.
Here Troy is making some bus bars for the electrical cabinet and he loves any excuse to use his beloved Forstner bits. These bits really do a, a nice job on ply because the these little tips on the shoulders, they cut a little circle and they really prevent a lot of tear out when this, this blade surface starts to get to work. I really like them. So now we'll do the same process again. Put another one up there, and uh, yeah, it should be pretty good. Anyway, that's um, just a little aside. Forced the bits, you know, just just consciously um, as I go through, just tools that if you're just starting out, things that you might, um, you know, what you can use them for. Half the job is just being aware of what they are. So yeah, recessing the heads and screws and bolts and things like that, cutting holes that are really accurate. These things are amazing. We've got our bus bars and they're ready for the, um, the next step. Rightio, so I've got a bit of white acrylic here. I'm going to put some switches with it. Strips of masking tape are a quick and easy way to guarantee accurate and even spacing. At this point in time, it looks like this from the back. Okay, here's our bus bars that we've got um, and the switch boards have gone in and that's how it looks on that side. The way I'm going to hold this shut is I've got some of these rare earth magnets. Uh, they, came in, um, they came in a crazy little invention <laughs> so I've just been cutting them out. So I showed you that we recessed earlier um, some magnets in here and now I've got their partners. So what I did is I've just placed them on there and um, I've, just, I've just marked towards the corners with a little um, marker just because I need to know when I, when I um, you know, put a hole in the lid and sink the, sink the magnets into it, when I epoxy them in there, I need to have them in the right orientation because with these magnets, they're really, really strong, but if you have them in backwards, they'll actually repel each other. It's just something to think of. Don't just go willy-nilly epoxying them into doors because if you get it wrong, you know, you'll have exactly the other effect. Now these magnets, um, these magnets, each one can hold a kilo. So when they pull on each other, you yeah, know, that's a, that's a pretty good, that's a pretty good grab. They wouldn't be very good if I was going to put a compass in behind this box, but this is a, this is a switchboard anyway, you know, so there's going to be some electromagnetism generated once this starts to fire up and electrons start racing everywhere. So under here are some fibre washers to keep this aluminium bar separate from the stainless steel. Then on the thread itself is some Tef gel, which is a dielectric paste. And we'll put another fibre washer on before I put the nut on. And that's to separate these conductors here from also this stainless nut, okay? So we won't get any bimetal corrosion going on in here. So this is a positive bus and this is negative, okay? So both sides of what you would see in a battery, essentially negative here and positive here and there's a decent separation. So what's coming in is we've got power coming in from our solar regulator and power coming in from our one of the battery banks that's selected. So as the solar um, regulator is putting out regulated DC power that's coming from the solar panels at the moment, about two and a half amps, it can hit this cable and go down and charge the battery. But it can also, because uh, it's regulated power, it can be running whatever might be running off here at the moment, nothing. So this is cutting down a little bit of the cable runs that I have to, have to worry about and have to put um, relays and things like that. And again, the negative is doing the same thing coming from the battery and the solar panel. The wind that's going to come in is going to have to go through its own little switch. Um, and then it can also be connected up to the batteries to charge. So here's our finished cabinets. Um, all glued together. The spline joint's really nice and strong. It's sheathed with a couple of coats of epoxy as well. And then it's covered by Pascal's amazing varnishing skills. So this should be a, quite a strong cabinet. And 
oh, yes, those magnets. They work pretty well. Like if it if ever opens and the boat's rocking, look at that. It really grabs a hold of it. So this is what we're looking at. Switch for our wind generator. Okay, on, pre-spool, off, locked off. There's a little display here, a little LED, and that's showing how many amps are going in from our wind generator. At the moment it says negative eight, and I think it just needs to be calibrated, just so it says zero, because there's nothing attached to it. And here, of course, we've got a voltage meter, and that's just what, the, what volts the house bank is sitting at. The switches themselves, anything you turn on, will have a nice red light to tell you that the switch is on, and these are just circuit breakers rather than fuses because fuses means you have to carry more stuff, although I am carrying fuses for other things. So there's the the back of that little ammeter is there, and here's its shunt so it can measure um, the amps. This little thing couldn't handle a direct connection. And the voltmeter itself, the voltmeter is connected to the circuit by alligator clips. I didn't hardwire it. What that allows me to do is, you know, once I uncoil these <laughs> long wires, is I can actually, I can reach anywhere in the cabinet and have a look and without getting my multimeter out and I can actually see what voltage things are. I can use that for fault finding in the future. But for the time being, they're clipped really, really firmly. They're good little clips onto a negative and a positive part of the circuit. Now, sometimes um, I've seen some other it's a little bit dirty in here. This is still a work in progress. I'm putting my dirty fingerprints in, but we'll be cleaning this up. But this is a still a work in progress. There's still a few more things to be added. Um, so later on, I will be putting some saddles here um, to, to make sure absolutely nothing moves. None of this stuff moves when you open the door and everything is secured here because that's pretty much how I want it. But there's still a little bit of work to be done here. I've looked in some behind some switchboards and they look beautiful. Like every single wire is traced really, really well. And all the, the thing that they have in common is that there's about a million zip ties being used in them. All right, these little cable ties. So while they look really, really beautiful, um, and I always admire the workmanship that goes into them, whenever you want to make some changes, it invariably <laughs> means you've got to just, you know, like a whole handful of zip ties has got to come out. All that plastic in the bin. So our solution for that is um, this loom coil. Okay, we wrap our cables in that, and that keeps them all nicely together. And then, of course, I'll just hold that with a saddle. When I want to make any changes, I'll undo two Phillips head screws, move the saddle, and then I can access the wires. Because when you when you're wiring up um, in behind a, a switchboard like this, you want enough you want enough cable in there, enough slack that if you need to cut off a connector and put a new one in, um, you know that's that's something you have to consider. So that's all pretty simple. There's going to be a few other things elsewhere. There's a little bit of a, a switchboard down there, um, more of a distribution board if you like. And you might think, well, that's, that's nothing compared to other boats where there's wires going everywhere. And that's true, but that's by design. We, we wanted to keep things simple. We, we really don't add another system um, that we have to deal with because every single thing that you have on your boat, you have to have some sort of relationship with it. <laughs> so. If you want to just spend a lot more time sailing and you want to make your boat more unstoppable, it's probably better to think about how many fragile systems um, and systems that, that need your devotion and care that you want to have on board. So it's a individual choice for every sailor, but you do have to make that decision. You should give it some thought.